this is the second day that I'm able to talk about it without crying because it really makes you fearful of your life. Of course. Lido Pimienta is passionate and outspoken. The same traits that drive her growing success in Canadian music have also landed her in the headlines. The singer says it's part of her mission to fight oppression through her music and during performances. An incident at a recent concert led to heated online reaction. We'll talk about that in our interview, but first, here's some background on this fierce voice for equality. Oh. Colombian-Canadian musician Lido Pimienta has had quite a run. In September, she won the prestigious Polaris Prize. Lido Pimienta, la papesa. Pimienta is an artist who fights for what she believes in. At her shows, she's known for requesting men to move to the back, for women to move forward, and for women of color to stand up front. It is, she says, her way of trying to fight exclusion. But last month at a music festival in Halifax, some in the audience apparently thought that request was unfair, allegedly refusing to move back, and according to Pimienta, disturbed her performance. It prompted an apology to Pimienta from the festival for, quote, overt racism, and led to lots of headlines. I met with Lido Pimienta at the Drake Hotel in Toronto to talk about what happened, her music, and her message. So Lido, it's very nice to meet you. Thanks for doing this. Hi, Ian. <laughs> so happy to be here. You uh, are, you know, I know you have fans right across the country, uh, but there are also people who are watching who don't know you and don't know your music. What should they know about you? They should know that I am a artist, curator, musician, and a mother. An activist? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. And you know, for a lot of people, the first they heard of you was uh, an incident at a concert in Halifax. What's your perspective on what happened there? Well, I think that people first heard of me because I won the Polaris Prize. No, a lot of people would have heard that, <laughs> for sure, no question. No question. But um, for the Halifax thing, um, I think people were misinformed. Um, and I don't blame people for being misinformed. What happened there? When we were performing, I was performing with this amazing artist, Kristen Olivia. And she and I were finishing a beautiful a cappella. We were playing um, with brass. It was just a beautiful moment. And when once we're, you know, saying our goodbye, we hear, you know, I get my, my musician tells me, look over there. And then I hear the screaming and the shoving and the pushing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it involved this photographer who was elbowing and shoving people so that they would give her um, space to take photos of me. And I just did what I thought was best was to stop the show and say, stop fighting, please leave, you're out of line, we don't have time for this. We tried to reach her, we can't. Mm. If you were able to reach her, what would you want to say to her? I would like to say to her that she should take responsibility for her actions. Um, it is important that when we make a mistake, we acknowledge that mistake. And that's what happened. She made a mistake. She wanted to have her picture not from the media um, area, and maybe she felt entitled to the space because she was hired by the festival, and I can understand that. But violence is never acceptable. I never thought that it would get to this point of you know getting all this alt-right movement, you know, paraphernalia attacking me and sending me all this hate speech. Um, and, and you've received bad messages? Yes, um, all sorts of death threats, um, yeah. instructional videos on how to kill myself, um, lots of fat shaming. Um, how, how, many, how many messages like this have you been getting? At least... Um, at least a hundred every 20 minutes. And, and yeah. this is particularly since the Halifax concert? Absolutely, 100,000% because of the headline. So you must dread opening up your 
yes. computer or your, yes. or your phone. Yes, um, yeah, this is the second day that I'm able to talk about it without crying because it really makes you fearful of your life. Of course. And how is it that these people that weren't even there suddenly know my life and, and, and my, my family and suddenly know and, and, and know what they're gonna do to me and... Wow. Yeah, it's... Um, have you talked to the police at all? No, I have not. I have not because I am hoping that something else will happen and then the attention will go over there. Yeah. You know, in Halifax, th there's been a history, and I, I used to live in Halifax, I'm very aware of, of the city. There was a history of, of people of African descent who were not allowed in certain places. And I don't want to speak for them, but, but I wonder if, if, if they might yearn for uh, an opportunity just to be able to walk into a club where nobody pays attention to their skin color one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Is that where we should be, you know, in, in, in your, the city that you spend so much time in now, Halifax, where mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're white or of color, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or not, uh, people should just come to your performance and stand where they want and, and enjoy it. Well, and people do. Um the gesture of highlighting how little of us there is in a room mm -hmm. is an important one because of where we are living now. If racism was a thing of the past, I would have no need to highlight any of the discrepancies and the inequity. You can look at any news right now and all of the allegations of these powerful people in Hollywood and all of the women in Hollywood that are speaking up, if somebody would have made a space for them safer, they would have been able to come out with their, tr their truths and their stories way sooner. And these people, these gatekeepers in Hollywood, they would have been in jail years ago. But when we keep silent, and when we don't highlight and we don't invite people to be safer, when we have the power to do so, you know, we are as guilty, right? So I am giving people an opportunity to be in a space where, whoa, I never really saw the world in that way. Let's make some space for these people so that they can have a great time because outside of the music bubble is not what happens. And to anyone who sees maybe just the headline or the two or three sentences about the controversy in Halifax who feel that this was a form of racism, what would you say to them? I would say that reverse racism does not exist. And I would say that you need to look at my lyrics, look at my videos, Look at the people that are on stage with me. I don't have the systemic power to segregate anybody. I don't have the institutional power to be racist against a people that hold 99.9 .9 mm. power in the world. It is impossible. We have to recognize that we are not in a post-racial society. Unfortunately, when I see myself in the mirror, I don't just see a woman. I see a woman that is indigenous. I see a woman that is black. I see a woman that is Colombian. And I see a woman that will never be considered a true Canadian. So those are the things that I carry with me. And because of that, because I know what that's like, when there's only 15 people of color in a room of 800 people and it's full, it would be a missed opportunity to not invite those vulnerable folks to the front. Well, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.